Dwayne Barentine was a single father raising his six-year-old son. Nothing is known about the child's mother. In June 2007, Dwayne and the child lived in the suburbs of the small sunny town of Mariana, Florida, USA. Although Dwayne worked full-time to provide a decent living for his son, he tried to spend as much time as possible with his child. The children were cared for by their parents over the weekend. He also took his son to kindergarten. However, the child lacked maternal care, and this worried the head of the small family. Duane repeatedly heard his son praying at bedtime for a mother. Deciding that the child needed a mother, Duane searched for the right woman to be his spouse and a loving mother to the child. One day, as he was picking up his son from kindergarten, the new teacher handed him a piece of paper with her phone number on it. He asked, whose number is this? And the woman replied that it was hers. Duane realized that the kindergarten teacher was flirting with him. He was already intrigued by this beautiful blonde, but hesitated to approach her. When the woman made the first move, he took it as a sign. The bachelor did not miss such an offer. They talked and realized that they had a lot in common. Tausha Lee Morton was a beautiful and sweet woman who seemed like the perfect mother for Dwayne's child. As a single father, Dwayne thought Tausha would be a great option to build a relationship with. Tausha was also a single mother who had recently moved into town with her six-year-old daughter, Lexi. At the time, Tausha was 31 years old and had just started working as a kindergarten teacher where she was doing a great job. After Dwayne and Tausha started dating, their children began communicating and became fast friends. Since Tausha's daughter and Dwayne's son were the same age, they immediately hit it off. Lexi even offered to call Dwayne her daddy. The parental feelings of the two lonely hearts coincided, and it seemed like a perfect match. Dwayne could not refuse such a touching offer. Tausha had a daughter from a previous marriage that she was careful not to mention. She was very private and generally did not talk much about the past. But in the early stages of the relationship, this did not prevent the lovers from falling in love. Literally a few weeks later, Lexi called Dwayne daddy. Dwayne was really attached to the baby. Tausha got along well with his son. No wonder they soon moved in together and lived like a big family in Dwayne's house. Dwayne was overjoyed with his sweetheart, Tausha. She was a sensual and stunning woman, and he could feel his love for her in even the tiniest delightful gestures. It appeared that the couples had found one another and that they had a bright future ahead of them. Dwayne told his family and old friends that he was madly in love with her. He found Tausha to be unbelievable. There were moments when her perfection was beyond his comprehension. But not everyone was overjoyed about the affair. Dwayne hurried to get together with Tausha after receiving criticism from his mother about how quickly their relationship was developing. Dwayne's mother advised them to check their feelings by looking at each other first, but he was too happy to heed her advice. Tausha even managed to persuade her prospective spouse that she had a criminal justice bachelor's degree. The woman was hesitant to discuss her past, though as it was typically a shabby tale. Tausha explained it away by saying that because she had been harmed in the past and found it difficult to recall, the man had not persisted in order to avoid upsetting his beloved. As time went on, Dwayne noticed more and more inconsistencies as these old stories were recalled. A few of them had extremely odd sounds. Tausha, for instance, stated that her grandfather was a federal judge and that he was supposed to leave her a sizable inheritance shortly after his death from a battery explosion. However, the inheritance never materialized. Even though such a high-profile event should have been simple to verify online, there was no way to confirm this information. Dwayne noticed that Tausha seemed to be fabricating stories about her life on the spur of the moment more frequently, the longer the couple had been together. This worried him. He had no idea with whom he had tied his fate and trusted his son. So he decided to learn more about her background and started investigating. The responsible father chose to reinsure himself, first and foremost, because he was worried about what might happen to his son. Through online research, Dwayne discovered that Tausha was previously married to Mitchell Wayne Kemp. However, that man wasn't the only a husband. Dwayne gradually learned that the by the time he was 31, kindergarten teacher had been married five times, and he thought that was strange. Tausha's daughter was with Mitch Kemp at that moment. When the man was able to speak with his true love, she revealed that her first marriage to Mitch Kemp had been more of an accident and a mistake. She had not had any deep romantic feelings for him, 
but rather had treated him as a friend. Duane made every effort, but he was unable to track down Tausha's father, Mitch Kemp, to learn more about her. The first spouse appeared to vanish. It also seemed strange to Duane that she had not tried to contact her daughter's biological father, despite not hearing anything about him for years. The man gradually revealed himself as one of Tausha's former husbands. Keith Jones was his name. They made plans to talk and meet. In general, Tausha was well regarded by Keith Jones' ex-husband. Jones acknowledged that his wife had told him many false tales and made up fairy tales, but had been reluctant to discuss her past with him. Simultaneously, Dwayne heard something for the first time from Keith Jones, and it hit him hard. Keith Jones confessed as if an ex-girlfriend in a tipsy state told him about her involvement in the murder of one of her ex-husbands, and this, of course, shocked Dwayne. According to Jones, Tausha had some alcohol that night, and her tongue was loose. If Tausha's story is to be believed, one of her exes raped her, herself, her daughter, but she didn't specify who. Tausha couldn't forgive that prank. At this point, Tausha was already married to another man, whose name was Greg Morton. She complained to him about what had happened and her husband lost his temper. But instead of going to the police and putting Mitch away, they decided to commit the crime themselves. Together, they planned the murder of the rapist. Tasha lured him to her new home, where Mitch was eager to visit, and Greg waited for him there and shot his abuser in the heart several times. However, Greg Jones did not believe his wife's story because she was literally making it up as she went along. The man thought it was one of her fabrications, especially since it was voiced under the influence of alcohol. That is why he did not contact the police. However, Dwayne had his doubts because he really couldn't find contacts for Lexi's biological father, Mitch, to whom she had been married just before Greg. He speculated that the man might already be dead. After that, Dwayne started to consider the information he had heard and look for more details. But in the meanwhile, he returned to his previous life with the new woman and showed no signs of worries. He decided to ignore all this so that his son could have a loving mother. He couldn't find any evidence of Tausha's involvement in the murders. Tausha was very loving and caring, and he was beginning to have doubts about the whole Mitch thing, so he abandoned his search for information. The couple was already in full swing preparing for the wedding. However, a few months later, Dwayne found out that Tausha was cheating on him. A fiery argument erupted, causing the man to evict her from the home, bitterness fueling his actions. The unfolding drama reignited his resolve to delve deeper into his personal investigation, exploring the mysteries of his former lover's past. His journey led him to her MySpace page, a digital doorway he had the key to. When Dwayne found himself amidst the digital echoes of Tausha Morton's account, he stumbled upon a trove of unanswered messages. They were inquiries, probing if the account holder, Tasha Fields, was once wed to a man named Mitch. They sought to unravel the mystery of Mitch's whereabouts. From the whispers of the family, Mitch had faded into oblivion around four years ago. Yet the desperate search to find him had not waned with the passing years. These digital cries for answers stirred concern within Duane. The unfolding narrative gripped him, urging him to dig deeper into the enigma. With every passing moment, Dwayne found himself more entrenched in the mystery, meticulously piecing together the fragments of information he collected along the way. 20. Dwayne had seen Lexi's birth certificate with the last name Kemp, the last name Tausha's daughter had. It was known to be the last name of one of her ex-husband. Tausha had been married to Mitch just prior to her marriage to Greg. Mitch had already been wanted for years by his entire family, and one of the ex-husbands, Keith, had told of Tausha's conspiracy with Greg and the murder of the abuser. The ominous picture loomed ever clearer. Apparently, not all of Tausha Morton's fantasy stories were fictional, but there was nothing further he could do. All his options for finding the truth had been exhausted. Duane then went to the Mariana police station and told the sheriff about the story. The police officers listened carefully to all the information provided and also became interested in the story of Mitch Camp. The police officers began their investigation and asked Dwayne to keep the case confidential so as not to scare Tausha away. According to the authorities, they had a case of a man's murder on their hands and there were even suspects. This was the first time a situation like this had occurred in the many years of policing this township. For the first time, a citizen conducted an independent investigation using social media to find clues to solve a crime from years ago. 
What surprised detectives the most was how well Dwayne was able to pinpoint the dates and times of events. The man turned out to be a natural investigator. Still, the detectives had to continue the investigation on their own, based on all these clues. They had to retrace Dwayne's steps. So the detectives turned first to Keith Jones, who told the story of Tausha's conspiracy. He repeated the story exactly as Dwayne had told it, and it was all recorded. They also contacted the relatives of the missing man, Mitch Kemp, who lived thousands of miles away in Boone County, Missouri. From them, they were able to obtain important information about the circumstances and the time period of the presumed victim's disappearance. Mitch's relatives confirmed that they always thought Tausha was involved in the man's disappearance. Officers interviewed the brother and mother, who literally hated the caretaker, but they said that was not always the case. When she first crossed the threshold of their home in 2001, she seemed very nice and friendly to everyone. The Kemps hit it off with the young beauty and began seeing her often and spending time together as a family. At the time, Tasha was 26 years old and Mitch was almost 11 years older. Even then, some people began to doubt the sincerity of her feelings because the girl was much younger and very attractive. She could have found a more interesting party and it was unclear why she chose Mitch, but then relatives understood why. At first, the couple's relationship seemed perfect, but the girl soon began to take over the leadership role, dominating her boyfriend and pushing her interests in every way, completely ignoring his wishes as well as the wishes of his family. But Mitch was a gentle and kind man and put up with all her antics. Mitch was a perfect victim of manipulation. Nevertheless, their romance continued. In 2002, the couple had a daughter, after which they played a wedding. Unfortunately, this union was not destined to be long and happy. The couple accumulated financial problems. The relationship began to resemble a swing with ups and downs. All the relatives noticed that one day they loved each other and lived peacefully, and the next day they literally hated each other. This could not last for long. After eight months, the marriage broke up. Tausha left the house with her daughter. However, the spectacular blonde did not want to be a single mother. So before the divorce was finalized, she met Greg Morton, started dating him, and then moved in with his daughter. Just six months after they met, they were married. All of this did not sit well with Mitch Kemp, who still loved his ex-wife and wanted her back, but Tausha refused to return. So Mitch decided to share custody of his own daughter and filed a petition with the court. The man put his ex on notice, which made her very angry. Mitch even threatened to get full custody of his daughter. He told his brother about this conversation in August 2004. He also admitted that Tausha had hit him and spit in his face during their last meeting. And just two weeks later, the man disappeared for good. The brother tried to contact Tasha to ask about Mitch. Mitch's brother knew that the couple had a serious conflict over divorce and custody and assumed that Tausha knew where he was. However, Tausha denied knowing Mitch's whereabouts and later began ignoring all calls and messages from the missing man's family. At the same time, she was paying her bills with money from Mitch's credit card, which did not sit well with his family. The missing man could not be located, so Mitch's relatives had to contact the Boone County Sheriff's Department. Unfortunately, the search for the missing man was unsuccessful. The sword literally disappeared without a trace. The investigation reached a dead end, and the case ended up on the shelves of an archive that no one really cared about. The investigators were unable to find any information or confirmation that Tausha and Greg were involved in the disappearance, much less the murder, of Mitch. It had been about four years. In 2008, Detective of Missouri State finally got a good lead. It was during this time that Dwayne told his story to members of his city's police department. However, other than the words of witness Keith Jones, the detectives had nothing. The police believed that Mitch was no longer alive. There had been no movement on his bank accounts, phone number, or social security number for four years. The cops had no body, no murder weapon, and the crime scene was already impossible to find. Ideally, they needed a confession. It was imperative to talk to the likely perpetrator of the crime, so detectives went in search of Tausha, then known by the last name Fields. When police tracked her down, she was located in Dickinson, Texas, and invited in for questioning. When the woman arrived at the police station, Tausha stated that she was willing to cooperate with law enforcement. Tausha has not been forthcoming about the fact that the story she told Jones about the murder 
is known to the investigation. According to the caretaker, she was not surprised that Mitch Kemp was missing because he had a bad temper and someone might have wanted revenge on him. When asked about her second husband, she said she was divorced from Greg a long time ago and had little contact with him and knew nothing about him. Tosha also denied having anything to do with her first husband's disappearance, but the investigators thought they were on the right track and didn't believe her. They continued to press the woman for a confession. The detectives decided to explore the identity of the suspected killer. From her first words, Tausha tried to describe Greg Morton as an unremarkable ordinary man. But the more questions the detectives asked, the more sinister Greg became. It seemed that he was someone to be truly feared. Tausha began to describe him as an aggressive, violent man, capable of inflicting pain and willing to do so. The officers managed to get Tausha to talk. She eventually admitted that Greg Morton killed Mitch Kemp. According to the interviewee, the first husband came to her home one day to discuss custody of her daughter while she was away. A heated argument ensued between the men, which escalated into a fight. That's when the new wife pulled out a gun and shot her ex-husband several times in the chest area. This happened in August 2004. She knew there could be a feud between the husbands because Greg was extremely jealous and suspected his wife of cheating with her ex-husband. According to Tasha, she even imagined this outcome but hoped it would not happen. Fortunately, she and her daughter were not home at the time of the crime. She swore to the police that she had nothing to do with the murder. She hadn't incited Greg or turned him against his ex. According to her, she found out on her own when Greg told her. The man described in detail how he shot her ex-husband. Tausha also shared information about where to look for Mitch's body. Tausha shared information about where the body was most likely to be found. The missing man's remains should be found at the killer's old farm. But Tausha didn't know exactly where. It's a huge piece of land, about 15 acres, that was sold six months after the crime. The old house had been torn down and a new one built elsewhere. It was impossible to reconstruct the crime scene, making the search for the body much more difficult. Although Tausha swore she was not involved, the detective had his doubts, especially because of Jones's story, in which the woman was clearly present at the crime scene and even lured her ex-husband to where the killer was waiting for him. This story needed to be thoroughly verified, but it was impossible to do so without a body. Nevertheless, Tausha actively cooperated with law enforcement. She even agreed to travel with detectives from Florida to Missouri, where the search party was to find the body of the missing Mitch on a farm property. Here, Tausha looked very confused as the environment had changed a lot during this time. There was another family living on the farm who couldn't even imagine that there was a human body hidden somewhere on their property. At one point, while walking around the property, the woman focused on the spot where her ex-husband's old house used to stand. Those structures had been torn down, but she pointed to the spot with great confidence. However, police officers with special equipment could not find anything here, so they suspected the witness of lying. According to detectives, Tausha would have known the exact location of her ex-husband's body. The search for Mitch's body continued on the farm property. The searchers did a lot of labor-intensive work, but were unable to find anything. After this failure, after five weeks of hard work, the suspect was questioned again. The officers increased the pressure on her. Not surprisingly, they had already dug up a huge area but couldn't find a single clue. Then Tausha suddenly remembered that a large hole had been dug in the farmyard. However, shortly after Greg told her about the murder, he buried him. Tausha Morton could even show the hole on a map and assumed it was exactly what they were looking for. The cops used this information and focused their efforts on that location. After only half an hour of digging, the searchers found human remains wrapped in a gift. The body was immediately taken for forensic examination, where it was confirmed that the remains belonged to the missing Mitch Kemp. Forensic experts also confirmed that he had been murdered. They found six bullets in his chest, causing instant death. Kemp was literally shot at point-blank range, leaving him no chance. Three weeks after the remains of missing Mitch Kemp were discovered, police in St. Louis arrested Greg Morton and charged him with first-degree murder. Investigators were confident that he would then confront his ex-wife, who they believed was also behind the crime. But Greg remained silent. Law enforcement officials thought that incarceration would make him talk, but their plan didn't work. Even after several months behind bars, Greg remained silent. 
the man would not testify against his ex-wife. Nevertheless, detectives decided to arrest Tausha, fearing she would flee. Despite the fact that there was no hard evidence, only a witness statement, Tasha was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. The 32-year-old woman was arrested in the city after being literally dragged off her motorcycle. Defendant then offered a different version of how Mitch Kemp might have died. She realized that she had in fact brought her former husband to the farm, but she had not intended to trap him because she was unaware of the trap. Tausha said that she had intended to give her ex-spouse the pictures of their daughter that had been taken that day at their daycare center and wanted to talk to him. She did not rule out that she expected to be intimate with her ex spousey as she had maintained a close relationship with him. But her husband, Greg, caught them together, came out with a gun, and pointed it at Kemp. The woman didn't even have time to react before her current husband fired six bullets into Mitch's chest. The suspect, however, cited fear. Tausha was simply afraid to end the relationship and report him, which led her to lie repeatedly during interrogations. Three weeks after Tausha's arrest, Greg finally broke his silence and told investigators his version of the tragic events. He immediately admitted to shooting Mitch. However, he claimed that his ex-wife had manipulated him into turning against his first husband, telling him about the rape and that he wanted revenge. Otherwise, he would never have harmed Kemp without his wife's initiative. He had no reason to kill Mitch. According to Greg, she was a skilled manipulator who got her way by lying. Nevertheless, Tausha insisted on her innocence. In June 2010, almost six years after Mitch's disappearance, his ex-wife's trial began. The trial featured a heated debate over the murder. Tasha's lawyers insisted that she was the victim of an abusive relationship with the violent Greg, who killed her first husband and forced her to keep quiet under threat of violence. Greg's lawyers argued that Tausha was the real culprit in the murder. She had encouraged her second husband, who loved her dearly, to kill her first husband, who was threatening to take their daughter away from her. Tausha had simply forced Greg to do it to protect their family. In the end, Greg realized he had made a mistake. But it was too late, and he divorced the manipulative Tausha. The defendant insisted that she had nothing to do with the crime. However, the prosecution was sure that it was the woman's manipulations that led to the tragic end. The main evidence was the confession of the perpetrator, Greg, who agreed to cut a deal with the prosecution in exchange for a reduction to second-degree murder. Greg testified against his ex-wife. As a result, he was sentenced to 19 years in prison. The prosecution believed that Tausha told her husband about the rape and that Greg became enraged and was ready to tear Mitch to pieces. But Tausha denied at trial that she ever told Greg. According to Greg, the wife herself picked up the gun and went after Mitch. She persuaded her second husband to shoot him as soon as she brought the man onto the farm property. Greg complied after firing a few shots. Kemp still showed signs of life. Then Tausha ordered him to shoot again. Greg complied again, and Greg used farm equipment to bury the body. Greg apologized to the victim's family for what he had done and regretted listening to his wife at the time. However, Tausha's defense case was based on the fact that the possibility of a reduced sentence caused Greg Morton to create his own false version of events and implicate his ex-wife. The attorneys tried to prove that the killer was driven by jealousy to shoot the innocent victim, Mitch. The couple's neighbor, who lived near their farm at the time of the crime, spoke at the trial. According to the man, Greg was very domineering, completely controlling his wife, taming her to do his bidding quickly and without question. It was obvious that Tausha was very afraid of her husband. According to the neighbor, there was no way she could manipulate Greg. She was afraid to say an unwanted word to him. Afterwards, another ex-husband of the defendant, who was the main witness for the prosecution, Keith Jones, was invited to the trial. The man repeated the story that the tipsy ex-husband had told him during their marriage. Keith Jones confirmed what he had said earlier, that it was the ex-wife who lured Kemp to the farm with the intention of killing him but Tausha denied that they had any such conversation. According to Tausha, he did not hear this version from her, but from Greg himself, because the men were friends, so Keith Jones wanted to vindicate his friend by framing her. In addition to the testimony, the jury had over eight hours of police interviews to review. Tausha's attorney was confident that his client would be acquitted. The jury understood that Tausha had cooperated with the investigation from the beginning, participated in the search, and that without Tausha, Mitch's body would never have been found. 
According to Tausha's defense attorneys, if she had actually been involved in her ex-spouse's death, she would not have given the police that lead and Michi's body would never have been found. However, Tausha may have had a motive, as the ex-spouse wanted custody of his daughter. All of his relatives said so, but the woman claimed that the first spouse saw Lexi regularly and they had no custody disputes. But there was another point of contention in the situation. If the jury found the woman guilty, she would be convicted of first-degree murder, while the man who directly shot the victim could receive a lesser sentence for second-degree murder, a skewed view of justice. It was up to the jury to resolve this difficult dilemma. After eight hours of deliberation, the jury returned to the courtroom. They found Tausha guilty of first-degree murder, deciding that the web of lees she had woven was premeditated. The jury explained their decision by saying that Tausha's story changed many times, while Greg's story never changed. They concluded that Tausha lied and manipulated the second husband to kill the first husband. This came as a real shock to Tausha Morton, who couldn't even say anything in response to the decision. Tausha Morton was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Tausha Fields tried to appeal her sentence, but to no avail. Mitch Kemp's family celebrated the victory. Justice had finally been served. However, against this backdrop, everyone forgot about Lexi, who was partially deprived of both her parents. The guardian of the girl became the brother of Mitch Kemp, who is also supported by members of his family. Greg Morton is still in prison. The man will be eligible for parole in 2024, when he will be 56 years old. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an update from us.